So let's talk about what's commonplace. Some things just happen all the time, and we take them for granted. But what's normal for us might be unusual for other people, and maybe we do something that's really rare compared to the people over in the next town. And it's the same for language sounds. Some sounds just do things a little differently than others. I'm O.T. Lieberman, and this is The Ling Space. Welcome to The Ling Space. So when you look at all the possible sounds that people can make with their mouths, some of them are really common for language, like ooh or sss, and then some never show up, like <laughs> That may be easy to do, but it's not a phoneme in any attested language. In between, though, there are also sounds that do show up, but only rarely, and those often depend on unusual ways of getting the sound out there. We're going to take you on a tour of these, but first, let's just take a moment to think about how weird spoken language is. We take in air from the environment and then push it out of our bodies while we think about what we want to tell other people. And then, without even doing it consciously, our fleshy bits from our lungs to our lips start flapping and squeezing and moving around, chopping the airstream into syllables that the human ear perceives as language. It's incredible. So there's a few different ways that we can make sounds happen with our faces. The most common is by pushing air out of the lungs, which we call pulmonic egressives. Pulmonic because of the lungs, and egressives because the air is going out. Our vowels like a ah, or a uh, or oo uh, come out of the vocal tract like this, free and easy. Most consonants are egressives too, but they differ from vowels in that the airflow gets more or less blocked. For a fricative like v or th, the articulators get close together but not shut all the way, so the air going through gets noisy. And for plosives, like b and k, your mouth closes completely for a bit before the air bursts from inside you free once more. These pulmonic egressives make up the sounds that the International Phonetic Association put together on the consonant chart, and you can see there's a lot of them. And this is the chart that you usually find and that we've talked about before. But if you think this is all there is, have we got a surprise for you. BAM! Extra chart. Okay, so this is a different kind of setup from the main IPA chart. Manner of articulation, or how you pronounce stuff, is listed across the top, and place of articulation, or where you pronounce stuff, is listed in the columns next to the symbols. Now, let's unpack this, starting over here, with adjectives. An adjective is when you eject a sound from your mouth with some extra venom and pop. You get that extra pressure from closing not only the usual articulators in your mouth, like moving your tongue up to your soft palate to make a cup, but also further down in your throat, where you shut your vocal folds tight. Then you just raise your larynx up. Your whole voice box goes upwards. That makes the air inside your mouth, between your tongue and your larynx, more pressurized than the air outside. And so, when you lower your tongue and let go of the closure, basic physics just wants these two now connected air pockets to match their pressures as quickly as possible. So the air goes out with a loud pop as the pressure inside your mouth and the world equalizes. You put it all together and it gives you something like this. Adjectives may not be super common, but they do show up in about 20% of the world's languages. And in about three quarters of those, they're phonemic. So swapping the adjective version for the regular, unpressurized, pulmonic version causes a change in meaning. Let's take an example from Tzeltal, a language from the Chiapas region of Mexico. Tzeltal has the same three voiceless stops as English, so p, t, and k, but it also has adjective versions of each of those. And we can pretty easily find minimal pairs for this. So like kush, or he woke up, is different from kush, or painful. So what kinds of things can you ejectivize? It makes sense that you can do it with stops, because a complete closure of airflow through your speech tube is exactly the kind of situation where it's easy to get the pressures to mismatch. But you can also do it with fricatives, where the airflow through the mouth gets so constrained that it gets kind of pissy, or with affricates, which are like a stop and a fricative that just fell in love at first sight. Even if those sounds are leakier, they're still constrained enough that your larynx driving up at the back of your mouth can cause that poppy imbalance. So let's go back to Tseltal, which actually has adjective affricates along with its stops. For Tseltal, the word for pimple is chin, with a regular ch, but the word for small is chin. In some languages, you can even get lateral adjectives that go out the side of the tongue instead of through the front. Klingit, a Native American language spoken in southeast Alaska and western Canada, has this sound like in its word for tongue. It's got adjectives on both sides. So if you look at the different adjectives we've talked about so far, you'll notice they're all voiceless and they're all oral. 
And that's because you can't have the other kinds, but why not? Well, it all comes back to how adjectives are made. You need a complete closure between your voice box and wherever your tongue or lips have stopped up the airflow because you need that high pressure system going on. But when you make a nasal sound, by definition there's air going out through your nose. And unlike with a fricative, your nose is a clear, easy path to ethereal freedom, so there's a mismatch there. And it's the same for voiced adjectives. Remember, voicing is made by having your vocal folds vibrate rapidly. And how do you make them vibrate? By blowing air through them while they try to stay shut. But for an adjective, the vocal folds actually have to be shut. They can't be vibrating as air goes through, they have to be straight up closed. So a voiced adjective would require your vocal folds to be doing two different things at the same time. And unless you're a literal five-headed dragon, that'd be pretty unlikely. So you can come up with some pretty interesting ways to push the air out of your lungs. But if you think about it, you can also suck air in in a noisy way. These are called ingressive sounds because the airflow goes inwards. Many people have this kind of noise as a not quite linguistic sound, like or <gasps> Some languages do have that ingressive mechanism as part of their meaningful bits, though. Like, the word for yeah in Swedish is an ingressive <laughs> There's even some dialects of English that pull in air to say yes, like in Scotland. And you know plosives like pudba or tunda? Well, you can make those towards the inside too, and then they become implosives. Not to be confused with explosives, which we suggest you should keep out of your mouth. Anyway, you can kind of think of implosives as the opposite of adjectives. You do the same steps, you seal the vocal folds and make a complete closure somewhere in the mouth. But this time you lower your larynx instead of raising it. This means that now the pressure in your mouth is less than the outside world. And when you open up the front of your mouth again, the air does its equalizing thing, but this time inside your head. It rushes into you, giving implosives like b and g their characteristic gulping sound. Implosives are a little bit less common than adjectives, showing up in about 13% of the world's languages. You mostly find them in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Asia, but they can be just as phonemic as adjectives. Take for example this pair of words from Sindhi, a language spoken in India and Pakistan. In Sindhi, the word for door is daru, but the word for fear is daru. The only difference between fear and a door is just gulping. Like adjectives, implosives can't have nasal versions, but unlike adjectives, they're limited to just stops. Tales of implosive fricatives and affricates exist, but they're extremely rare and possibly just illusory. And this makes sense. To get a fricative, you can't have a complete closure. For an adjective, that's not so bad. You can still get a good amount of pressure inside your mouth behind that hissy fricative. But for an implosive, you'd need to change the pressure of the entire world outside, which isn't really likely. But what about voicing? You might have noticed that implosives are the opposite of adjectives here. Implosives are all voiced instead of voiceless. You can have voiceless implosives though, they're just really rare. But you get them in languages like Serer or Igbo. Implosives are sort of like ultra-voiced sounds. They usually come from voice stops that got more aggressively voiced over time. So getting them on voiceless sounds is really peculiar. There's one more class of ingressive consonants, and they're my favorite type of sounds. Clicks. These sounds are super cool and super uncommon. It's almost just one language family in southern Africa that has them. You make them by pushing the body of your tongue to the soft palate, and also making another closure further front in the mouth, like your lips or teeth. Then you slide your tongue body further back along the soft palate. By making the space inside your mouth bigger, the pressure in it goes down and creates suction. Then you release the closure at the front and pop! You can make clicks at a lot of the same places of articulation as other consonant sounds, like the bilabial click or the dental. But you can't make them at the soft palate or further back, like at the uvula, because that would require some kind of weird anti-space that defies regular physics. Not a good choice. And different cliques can contrast with each other, too. Khoikhoi, Koi, one of the national languages of Namibia, has 20 different click phonemes, depending on where you pronounce them and how you release them. So like plain, nasalized, with a puff of air, lots of choices. But to give you a taste, the plain dental click in ngwa, or put into, contrasts with the plain alveolar click in ngwas, or hollow. So the variety of language sounds humans make is more diverse than most of us realize. We gulp air in and pop it out and click our tongues with meaning. We've used almost every way we could come up with to broadcast our ideas to our neighbors. How's that for a commonplace? So we've reached the end of the link space for this week. If you kept the explosives out of your mouth, you learned that there are more types of consonants in human language than just the ones made by pushing air out of your lungs. 
that ejectives involve pressurizing our vocal tracts and then popping out some consonants, and that ingressive sounds are made by sucking air in and include clicks and implosives. The Ling Space is produced by me, Moti Lieberman. It's directed by Delelise Prévost, and it's written by both of us. Our editor is Georges Coulomb, our production assistant is Stéphane Herdebees, our music is by Shane Turner, and our graphics team is Atelier Muse. We're down in the comments below, or you can bring the discussion back over to our website where we'll have some extra material on this topic. Check us out on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you want to keep expanding your own personal link space, please subscribe. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Mwah, mwah.